he saw a man, a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is, while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes, saying, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. Then he went and washed and came back, able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, Is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, It is he. Others were saying, No, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, He put mud on my eyes, then I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, What do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until he received his sight and asked them, How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind. But we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be God. Therefore his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. So for the second time they called the man, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, you are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses. Moses. But as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. I heard that anyone opened the eyes of a blind person. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sins, and you were trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me, so I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking... The one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe. And he worshiped Jesus and said, I came into the world for, and Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment so that those who do not see may see. And those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, surely we are not blind, are we? 
Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. But now that you say, We see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord, which is the, the last town I served a, a congregation in, Hi St. Anne's people, um, there's a man who's known as the Blind Woodsman. His name is John. And hi to John and Annie, his wife, who might be joining us for morning prayer this morning. In the reading of the Gospel this week, I thought of John. He was not born blind like the man in the Gospel. But he struggled with years of depression, and then he fell into drug use. There was a point in his life that just seemed so unbearable that he attempted suicide. And that resulted in his complete loss of sight. Of course, this changed his life, but he didn't begin regaining vision, not sight, but vision, until he was at a school for the blind in Utah. And he discovered his real calling, woodworking. Now John is a woodworker, and he creates these beautiful bowls and pots and plates and canisters and these beautiful pieces of artwork. John, please do put your website in the comments so people can find you. He uses an amazing equipment that scares me, a uh, seeing person, a bandsaw, a lathe, and he just uses his hands to see and do all of this work. In an interview, he shared, he said, I'm so different now that I may have actually been born when I became blind. Really, I'm just a completely different person, he said, and that's a good thing. It really touched me to read that um, John and his wife Annie, they celebrate John's life day on the anniversary of the day that he attempted suicide and the day that he lost his sight. John ended one interview saying, I had to lose my sight in order to gain my vision. Knowing John's story, it helps me to understand the gospel this week. After Jesus gives the man born blind sight, note I didn't say he healed him, because a man born blind is whole in and of himself. But Jesus came and changed him. After that happened, Jesus said to everyone, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. I can see now in John's story how blindness might be essential for our actual seeing. Of course, I don't mean that we all literally need to lose our sight, but all of us, in some way, our lives will be changed in ways that we might initially label bad. But in the big picture, they might bring us more fully into the truth. Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, um, she's a Swiss-American psychiatrist, she wrote with great insight about death and dying, she said, the most beautiful people that we have known are those who have known suffering and known defeat. The people who have known, known loss and have found their way out of the depths. Beautiful people do not just happen. In today's reading, the man born blind, he responds to the gift of sight that Jesus gives him, as you might expect at such a gift. He becomes a believer in Jesus. The else responds to him. The community responds to him, not with... See, the community around him, they thought they had it all figured out. They assumed that as long as it was the consequence of somebody's sin, then people could make sense of why someone might be blind. But... Jesus rejects the premise of their question as to whose sins called, caused them. He said, this blindness is no one's fault. These things don't happen because of sin. This blindness is not a consequence. 
It just is. If we cannot trace what we perceive to be suffering to a source, to a cause, it can become unnerving. We want answers. We want reasonable explanation. That's not what we're given. In the in the movie, in the which I haven't watched yet, um, but in the book, in the novel, The Shack, the um, uh, which wrestles with themes of loss and suffering, William Young he quotes the God of his imagination, and he quotes God saying this: "Just because I work incredible good out of unspeakable tragedies, it doesn't mean that I orchestrate these tragedies." Don't ever assume that my using something means I caused it or that I need it to accomplish my purpose. That will only lead you to false notions about me, suffering to exist. But where there is suffering, you will find grace. This is also what we read together in Psalm 23. We read the words, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God didn't orchestrate the valley of the shadow of death. But because we are in it, God will work through it. God is a shepherd, bringing us through reality as it is. God does not make people blind. God does not make people disabled or sick with the coronavirus in order to punish them or those who love them. Our rational minds might like that or be appeased by that idea, but that's not the reality revealed in God and the scriptures. So if blindness isn't a punishment for sin, and in John the blind woodman's case, Blindness could even be seen as a life-giving thing. What does that mean about our world, about how God works? It means anyone might get sick or suffer for no reason. I know it's not fair by our standards, and it, it, it upends a lot of our security that we rest on believing that if we act right or think right, then things will be right. But the circumstances for God's grace does not depend on our, our faults. The people who witnessed the blind man being given sight by Jesus were scared by forces at work around them that they could not understand or control. That was really unnerving for them. It's really unnerving for us when we have our control taken away. In the midst of this pandemic, I don't know anyone who isn't struggling with control, with feelings of helplessness. Weakness are as bigger than our day-to-day -day realities. We for the good toward love. We and when we lose control and things around us fall apart, then it's then that we may recognize that this valley that we are in, it's not the whole story. Like the blind woodsman, it might take losing a part of ourselves to find ourselves. He is challenged by his blindness, but he doesn't suffer from blindness. Have a keep going sort of attitude said being blind has taught him to go with the flow. I've been born when I became blind. During this pandemic, this wilderness time, I believe our eyes are being opened. My eyes are being opened in new ways. I can see now just how fragile we are, how connected we are, and how much we take for granted. Find ourselves a our true vision. Whatever these bodies plays a small role in our development as followers of Christ. So let us move from fear and grasping at to going with the flow. 
to trusting the seeds of hope that are within us and seeking awareness of God's grace leading us through. As we all make sense of this changing world, hungering down at home, preparing for the worst and praying for the best, let us not confuse sight for that greater vision. And may this also serve the awakening of our hearts and the opening of our eyes. Amen.